Jesus is saying when he says, where your treasure is, your heart will be also? He's saying your heart follows your bank statement. Go look at your bank statement, your checkbook, whatever, and you'll see what you desire, what your heart <coughs> desires. And what you spend your money on, Jesus says, it has eternal ramifications. Store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Invest in kingdom business. And understand something really important about Jesus. He would never force anyone to give to God or invest in kingdom business. He would never do that. He would never tell someone, you can't have a new car, you can't have a new house, you can't have a new boat. He would never do that. He simply wants you to think about what you, what, what you buy, what you spend your money on. Understand that it's all temporary. That's the part we often forget about. Material possessions are not bad. It's just that they're temporary. We don't have them forever. You probably heard, you can't, uh, you've never seen a hearse driving down the road pulling a U-Haul trailer. <laughs> you can't take anything with you to heaven. But you can store up treasures in heaven. You can do that. And I believe when you invest in heaven, when you store up treasures in heaven, when you invest your money in those things, I believe it does change your heart. I know this to be a fact because we support missionaries. In fact, I just got on the phone with one a couple days ago that when we invest whatever it is, amount per month to support this missionary and other missionaries, but it makes me think about him. It makes me pray for him and them. And so that's changed my heart. I want to know the work that's going on in the place that they're doing their work, that they're ministering to. I think the same thing applies when you invest even here at Life of Purpose. If you give faithfully, you give proportionally to your income, you give consistently, I guarantee that's not all you're going to do if you're giving here at Life of Purpose. You're going to serve here. You're going to pray for the things that are going on here. You're going to get involved. You know the Old Testament... People have this discussion all the time. The Old Testament talks about tithes and offerings. The New Testament doesn't mention it, right? Where we so think. A tithe is a tenth, by the way. That's the word. Tithe means tenth. So the Old Testament, God's people would give tenth of their income, plus more. Plus more offerings. But the New Testament, everybody thinks that, well, not everybody, but most people think that the uh, tithes and offerings is done with. Right? And, and you're supposed to just give cheerfully, because that's what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 9. But just think about this for a minute. Jesus came to abolish the law? No. He came to fulfill it. And in every one of the teachings of the New Testament, what does Jesus do? Lower the bar or raise the bar? He raises the bar. So why would that be any different in our giving? He raises the bar. To me, 10% is always the minimum. You know, think about this for a minute. Could you survive a 10% pay cut right now? I mean, you look at your income and you say, could I survive 10% if they cut 10% of my pay? Could I, could I do it? Could I make it? Could I cut back on a few Starbucks, ladies? Over here on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> could I go out to eat a little bit less? Could I, could I do it if I had 10% less? I think most of us would probably say, yeah, I can do it. And if you can do it, then you can tithe. It's really that simple. But the best part about tithing is, versus a pay cut, is tithing stores up treasures in heaven. Pay cuts don't do that. Pay cuts just make you grumble and complain. But tithing leads to presence in heaven. So I just say that because I want to encourage you as you prepare your budget for 2021, think about giving from the heart.